Hey, welcome back, traders. It's December 22nd, 2023. This is John. I'm recording this about 1230 on Friday Eastern time. The S&P and the NASDAQ are up fractionally, while the IWM, the small caps, are outperforming up about 1%. So again, I'm an amateur individual gross stock investor. Big agenda today. We're going to talk about the indices and breadth. We're going to update ourselves on the Whaley breadth thrust. Uh, we'll talk about the Santa Claus rally, and then we will talk about how we're going to evaluate a potential pullback using a report card. And then we'll talk about TMLs, true leaders, what do they look like coming out of the gate and their first pullback, and then we'll wrap up. So first, let's dive into the indices. So I just wanted to start with this um, yearly chart. This is actually the S&P 500 for the year, which is in black, as you can see here. And we're going to finish somewhere in the neighborhood of 29 percent um, year to date gains in the S&P. Those who say we're still in a bear market, um, that would be hard to believe when you look at all of the sectors, either all the S&P ETFs. And if you look at all those sectors from the bear market low on October 13th, every single sector, believe it or not, is actually in the green is above the where it was at the market low. Even biotech is coming on very strong in the last month. And many sectors are outperforming and leading to all-time highs, such as the XLK, the communications, and the XLI. So the market is looking six to nine months ahead. And we've had the strong rally with a number of sectors outperforming. So let's get into the uh, NASDAQ. Look at the NASDAQ 100, the Qs. And uh, my pullback indicator warning is showing the shading in pink. And you can see we've had multiple days that we've really been extended here. And we finally had that sharp, sharp decline um, on Wednesday, shocking the market a little bit. So we've had multi-day pullback. Now, you'll notice that the last time we had this kind of multi-day pullback signal was way back around the July peak. Um, and you can see that that had a, had a harsh uh, pullback for a couple of gay days, but then it tried to recover. And I think the clue was when we had the reversal that we um, really started to see that maybe we would go into a deeper pullback. Now, right now, pullbacks, I would think, would be contained between 3 and 5%. So I've shown on the chart the 3% level, which is here. 5% level would bring us down to this really this kind of uh, a shelf, this area of support. So this might be in the cards. Um, but we'll have to take it day by day. As we pull back, one of the things I'll be looking for is I want to see the net new highs, which have been very strong, to stay above full 50 on um, the pullback. So we'll talk about um, the report card for the pullback in a little bit. Here's an update to our breakouts plotted as of last night. We had some more breakouts this week. Um, Fresh broke out. We also had some other big caps, SMCI and Zillow. And then we had another distribution day on Wednesday. But very positively on Thursday, we recovered over half those declines. So still a very positive picture with a breakout front. Now let's get into the Whaley update. So this chart is from September 14th when we last looked at the Whaley breath thrust that we had in January. If you don't know what I'm talking about with a Whaley thrust, you can see the January 27th general market update, which explains it all. We were monitoring how we were actually, um, we had these signposts, but we were trailing them most of the year. And when we left off, we said, boy, we'd need a real big rally if we were going to get up to the target that was set from the January trifecta. So let's look at the update. Amazingly enough, after this three wave down correction, we did get a very strong rally, which continues. And believe it or not, we're up in the 4760 um, area right now. And we're, you know, very close to meeting this target, which is really amazing when you consider this average gain of 28%. We're going to be somewhere in that range, very, very close uh, to finish the year. So they were just signposts to help us understand what we could expect. Um, wasn't easy to get there, but we seem to be hitting those targets, believe it or not. So to go one step further, uh, Ryan Dietrich of Carson Research said, 
recently that the S&P is going to likely be up seven consecutive weeks. And this is as of last week, which I've shown on the chart, seven consecutive weeks up. And he said it's only happened 10 times since 1990. And he, the statistic that was important is what could we expect four weeks later and eight weeks later? And eight weeks later, um, it was higher nine times out of the 10. Pretty good track record. Now, um, eight weeks from the signal would bring us to about middle of February. So you can see here, I put on the, uh, the chart, um, this is about where mid-February would be. Um, the S&P has been lagging the NASDAQ on the rally, but um, interestingly enough, in mid-February, um, if we continue to rally per these odds, um, it would bring us potentially right into the 5,000 psychological area of the S&P, which might be an area that we definitely could see some backing and filling and possibly basing. Um, so interesting dynamic. It's something we'll have to monitor as we go forward, but we're just trying to set some expectations. Um, we definitely could get a pause in this 5,000 area on the S&P. So let's talk about the Santa Claus rally. What is it and what can it tell us? So the Santa Claus rally is the last five days of December trading days, plus the first two days in January. So this year, it's today, the 22nd, and it will be the 26th, 27th, 28th, 29th, and the first two days of January. Now, when that period is positive gains, it's typically been positive gains of 1.3% since 1950. And when this period is negative, it usually precedes some corrective periods or bear markets. So I'm going to show you a data table to look at this a little more closely. For reference, last year in 2023, the Santa Claus rally yielded a positive number of 0.8%, which um, you know was very uh, positive going forward with the market. So here's where we are today. Um, seasonally, the returns in this period are, have been pretty good. So this is from Carson Research looking at the data. So the top half of the chart is looking at specifically the Santa Claus rally period. And it's showing, you know, we've had a very positive uh, trend the last few years. So we'll have to see how this plays out for 2024. But you can see that, um, you know, it's been very, very good at predicting, um, you know, what might happen going forward for the calendar year. Now, if the Santa Claus rally is negative, and you can see the last series of ones which were, were clearly negative, it actually foretold a negative January, which foretold kind of mixed results for the calendar year. Some years were up, some years were still positive. Just something to keep in your back park, pocket as we look at the Santa Claus rally period, and then we're going to look at January. So in addition to the Santa Claus rally, we also look at what they call the January 1st five-day indicator. And this is when we look at the first five-day trading days of January. And when those five days are positive, they tend to set the tone for the year because the data shows that if those five days are positive, there's an 86% chance that the year will be positive with data going back to 1950. Last year, the January five-day indicator was a plus 1.4%, and we've had a positive year here in 2023 on the S&P. Now, the January barometer is when the entire month of January is a positive gain. That also has um, a correlation to being the year will be positive 73% of the time since 1950. Now, I will note in recent years, for the last six years, um, this indicator has been wrong. So it's not something to uh, place any big bets on. It's just an interesting factoid. Now, we know that in 2023, we're going to finish positive. And last year, we had the complete January trifecta, which was the Santa Claus rally, the first five days, and the month of January. And when you get the trifecta, all three are positive. It's a positive year for the S&P. And the average gain is 17% on average over that period of time. So 2023 is going to be positive, and that will make it 29 of the last 32 being positive. So if you get the trifecta, there's actually almost an almost 91% chance that the S&P will be positive for the year. So something to keep in our back pocket over the next month 
as we uh, evaluate the tone of the market. So let's go to the pullback report card to share what I'll be using to evaluate the first pullback. So I think it's important to be prepared and how you will try to evaluate, is the pullback normal action or is it signaling abnormal action? So we're trying to decipher when the market and some of these leading stocks pull back, we wanna see if they're pulling back in a controlled, gentle fashion, which might look like a crouching of the indexes before another leg higher, or is the market and leading stocks coming under sharp distribution? And in that case, the pullback might be really, really sharp. And it's almost like touching a hot stove where the pullback is pretty sharp and you might look like there's some pain involved. I'll also be looking at the decline from the highs in the indexes and leading stocks relative to each other. We wanna look at that action to see if it's normal or if it's abnormal, what key levels of support are holding or failing. We'll look at the 20 day moving average. We know we have a power trend that's in motion. So we wanna see if that stays in place on the pullback or it falls apart. And as I mentioned, net new highs and new lows, I would really like to see the net new highs stay above 50 net new highs during the pullback. That would still be constructive. And of course, we've got to look at the leading stocks. Are the leading stocks holding key moving averages? Are they showing distribution? Or how much are they percent declining versus um, each other and relative to the index? So these are the, some of the things we'll use to measure this as it unfolds um, in January. Now, looking at some of the leaders, um, let's take a look. Since November 1st, um, probably some of the strongest leaders in the market right now are Uber. It's had a 50% move up leg and has been hardly any give back. It's only about, about a 4% give back and um, it's at new highs, really positive. CrowdStrike is another leader of this market. It's up 50% plus and it's hardly given anything back. So again, very strong. Affirm has had a very, very powerful breakout and big, big volume. It was up over 100% in three weeks, and that really triggers um, Bill O'Neill's eight-week hold rule for those of you that are in the stock. And we're, I'm gonna be looking for, could this form a high tight flag? It's such a powerful move that it's rare. We really wanna pay attention to see if there's an entry point. Nutanix, again, a strong 50% up leg, and there's hardly any give back. Now, ServiceNow has had a 36% move, but it had a sharp pullback, but it held the 20. And the 20 is probably a key moving average for growth stocks in an uptrend. Shop, um, strong 65% move. It kind of paused at the top of the base. Now it's working its way higher, constructive. AMD, another strong move off its base lows. It's gotten good volume on its new chip release. Um, Pulte Homes in the um, housing sector has had a powerful move and it's holding its gains tight and it's at all time highs. I will uh, disclose I have a position in CrowdStrike and I have a position in Pulte and a whole bunch of other leaders here that are acting well. And I won't go into all the detail. You can just pause your video player. But the point is we're seeing cybersecurity being a leading group. We're also seeing new merchandise, ARM, GitLab, Fresh, um, Elastic, Path, Duolingo, and even large caps such as Booking.com are showing very strong action at all time highs. I will disclose I own a position in ARM and GitLab as well. So this is where we are today. When we pull back, we'll be looking at the action in these stocks very closely. So leaders out of the gate and the first pullback. Let's look at this closer. So when we anticipate a pullback, basically since we are kind of extended here, the question remains, can you hold through a pullback? And should you hold through a pullback? We know that true market leaders, model book stocks, typically have a run of 12 to 21 months. Your ability to answer these questions is how are you positioned in the stock and how much cushion you have? So here's a really interesting table um, that shows what you need to have in order to sit through a pullback. This shows you the gain 
that you have in the stock, 20% all the way up to 100. And it shows if we get a correction in that stock of 15 to 35%, um, what does that do to your gains? So for instance, you could use the table like this. If you have a 40% gain in the stock, if it corrects 15%, it's telling you your, your gain will be reduced to 19%. So if you only have 20 to 25% gains, you can see that when you start getting 20, 25% pullbacks, you're in the red, you've lost all of your gains. So it's a handy little table um, that you can use. So let's look at this in more detail. So again, graphically, if you, if you bought coming out of a base and you have a 40% gain and the stock forms a new base and has a 20% pullback, you can see that your gain will be reduced to 12%. You have to decide if that's acceptable to you or not, um, but it shows you that you have to have a pretty good cushion to hold through a base. Now, most stocks will base after a 20 to 25% move from a breakout. So if you have a breakout and you bought it just right, and it goes up 25%, you can see that um, if, it, if it pulls back and forms a new base of 20%, you're going to give up all your gains trying to hold through that base. So, you know, one of the tenants in Bill's book is he tells us that you should take most of your gains at 20 to 25%. And one of the reasons is because a pullback or a new base could put you under severe pressure. If you bought extended, you're definitely going to be underwater. Now, there's no uh, predictive value to say we don't know if it'll form a base. It's possible the stock pulls back to its 20-day moving average and continues its uptrend to go on to bigger gains. So you have to be ready and prepared mentally how you're going to handle your stocks, if you're going to grab some of those 20, 25% gains, and perhaps hold what might be the big leaders, and we just shared what we think the big leaders really are. So remember that if an index pulls back 6.5%, um, growth stocks are going to pull back two to three times the NASDAQ. So a 6% pullback is going to be somewhere in this 18 to 20%. These are all handy rules of thumb to have in your back pocket as you're evaluating your positions. So let's look at this with some real positions. So I just pulled up CrowdStrike and I do have a position in this stock. We had this very, very strong move from this ascending base. It's up 38%. So if you bought out of the ascending base, you say, well, what happens if this thing corrects 20%? Well, 20% when you do all the math comes down to this 215 area. And that's probably gonna line up roughly with the 50 day moving average where it might get support. So that's one possibility. Now, CrowdStrike being one of the big leaders of this market, I'm not sure it's going to pull back 20%. Um, it may only pull back um, to the 20 EMA, which is this purple line, which would still be a pullback, but it might continue higher. So you have to determine how you would handle it. And I'll share a little bit more of why I don't think CrowdStrike will come all the way back down to a 20% pullback yet. And I'll share some research why I believe that. Here's DoorDash representing the other situation where it came out of a base and it's had a nice 22% gain. Um, so you might, you know, have to evaluate if this is going to form a base, you're going to wipe out your gains. So this might be one that's, you know, it's a strong stock, but it's not as strong as Crowd CrowdStrike, which might be one of the big leaders. So 22% gain, you might want to consider grabbing those and banking those profits to help you hold other stocks. So in studying the model book stocks, uh, me and a few other people did a study of the 2016 to 2018 rally. And one of the things that we studied was what we call the initial run of a stock in a bull market. And what does this first 12% pullback look like? So the big winners of this study, when they had their initial run, the initial run, the median gain was 40%. Now, it's an interesting number, 40%, because it relates to uh, generally um, you have to have at least 40% if you're going to pull through a base, a 20% base. So the big leaders really show strength, like CrowdStrike, like Uber, like Nutanix. And you get that first 12% pullback, but if you bought right, 
you're going to be able to hold to this 12% pullback. So there's some interesting data here of how long it took to get to 20%, as well as the first pullback. Um, the less uh, strong winners from that bull market, now these were winning stocks, but they did not have the thrust coming out of their first, first big leg up. The, those stocks had a median gain of only 11%. So that first 12% pullback puts you under a lot of pressure. Um, as you can see, you're actually coming back down below the pivot. Again, this is research done in the 2016 to 2018 winning period. Um, it's helpful to have these in, in your mind because they can help you hold a big winner or consider giving up a stock and taking your gains and moving your money to try to get into the big leaders. So it's just telling us what true market leaders look like. Taking that further from this study, the top 10 winners, what did they look like with their initial run and first 12% pullback? These are the top 10 winners, shop all the way down to match.com. And I've shown here, what was the initial breakout run? And then what was the depth of the first pullback? So shop had a 44% initial run, Again, there's that 40% thrust and only a 14% pullback. So it didn't give back many of their gains. Some of them had bigger runs, um, but it's interesting data. And you'll also notice the starred ones, the big leaders held the 21 day moving average for the first eight weeks of the move. So you might wanna pause this and look at these statistics closer and then look at some of those big leading stocks in the current market. So if you're trying to follow um, the big leaders and maybe you're not in them, but you want to get in them, a couple of screens that are really helpful five to eight weeks after a follow through day. And these are standard IBD preset screens. Start looking at power from the pivot, pull back to the 10 week moving average line and top rated IPO screens that are in MarketSmith. And the reason I say that, the reason these screens are good because the leading stocks are probably already extended and we know they are because they already broke out. And why I mentioned in the last video that I really think it's beneficial to try to find your way into the big leaders, get into the winning horses because the winning horses rarely back up to the starting gate and come all the way back down to the pivot. Um, you're better off being in the big leader than you are taking second and third tier stocks. So here's some screens um, to help you look for ways to get into those leaders. So let's wrap up. Next week, I'll be doing my year in review and we'll specifically look at educational teaching moments that came across during the year. And I'll share my 2024 Rain King picks. Obviously in this, in this video, I spent a lot of time on preparing for pullbacks. So hopefully that's useful to you. And you wanna know how the leading stocks act. And how do you do that? You have to study past model books. You know, Bill's book's got a lot of model book stocks. Um, so there's a lot of thing, information out there. I've done work on the 55 greatest winners and other model book periods. So study model book stocks. Exposure levels, I still believe are somewhere in the 75 to 85% level. I've, we still get positive feedback from the market. And I still think it's important to keep a little powder dry to be able to add to positions with controlling risk um, to actually increase and get more money into the leaders. If you're fully invested, you're not going to have that unless you start selling off and taking some gains at 15, 20 to 25 percent. So let's just observe how this pullback unfolds. It's been a lockout rally, and we have shared some things in this video of what might be normal action versus abnormal action. So the 2024 market calendar, um, I guess last chance, if you want to get this document, just send me $15 and send that. My PayPal account is the 55 greatest winners at Gmail. So I wanted to remind people of that. And the quote of the week is, price might hurt you, but size can kill you. Be very careful about getting your average cost too high and really increasing and getting aggressive with your position size because you're gonna be under pressure as we've shown in this video when we get that pullback. And if you're not prepared, you really could give away gains or get hurt even worse. So monetary average costs, watch your, your size of your positions to best position you for the bigger move. 
So that's the, the general market update for this week. I wanted to wish everybody happy holidays. This actually marks the two years that I've been doing these free general market updates. I want to thank you for following me on my YouTube channel and on X. And I hope that these educational uh, bits along the way are helping you with your trading. Again, next week, we're going to do the year in review. And we'll also do look at the Rain King picks for 2024. So have a great weekend everybody. And thanks again and happy holidays.